Well, bank stocks got rocked this past week, and investors are looking to the yeah. Fed for where yeah. interest rates are headed. Yeah. RBC Capital Markets I, head of U.S. Know. equity strategy Lori Calvacina is here with what to expect next. Lori, will the Fed raise rates this coming week, and what do you think investors want to hear? So, look, I think our economist, uh, Tom Porcelli, put it well when he says it's a game-time decision. If things are fairly stable, he can see them going and doing 25. He thinks 50 is probably not going to happen. But if things continue to be volatile, they might decide to go ahead and take a pause. And there's actually, you know, it doesn't seem like there's a lot of time until that meeting, but there's actually quite a few days. If the Fed does go slower from here on rate hikes, does inflation continue to fall? Is that inevitable now? I, I think so. And, you know, I know people get very caught up in this category, perked up a little bit, didn't come down enough. I think that we've clearly seen the peak in inflation. It may be a bumpy path downward. But I do think all the work the Fed already has done is going to take some time to filter into the system. But I think that medicine is in the process of flowing through the economy's veins. What do you think about U.S. stock valuations right here? What's a reasonable expectation for returns for investors? So valuations don't look bad. They don't look fantastic either. And there's a lot of uncertainty because there's a lot of uncertainty about where earnings are going to end up. But even on my below consensus numbers, I think we're still pretty reasonable for this year. How, how would you say below consensus? Far below? What do you think? I'm at 199 and the street's at around 222. So even on my That's numbers. That's a big difference. Yeah. Even on my numbers, you know, we're, we're still reasonable. We don't look fantastic, but we look okay. Okay. And is that does that anticipate a recession? I mean, that sounds like a pretty big difference in earnings. So we think that if you go back and look at stock market pricing in October, it already baked in a mild, short, shallow recession that takes place in 2023. I think the thing that could take valuations lower, and this is not my base case, but this is the risk, is if you end up seeing a recession in 2024. I don't think that's been priced yet. Are there parts of the stock market that are more vulnerable than others to missing on earnings, which I guess is a roundabout way of saying, what would be your favorite sectors to invest in right now? So I think the tech space is really interesting right now. We've been overweight that sector um, because we wanted, frankly, to keep our toes in the growth trade. I think earnings got de-risked there largely last year. I think the value sectors, things like energy, financials, even before this banks blow up, um, I think those areas are kind of the last dominoes to fall. Earnings expectations were resilient last year. Now they've got to bake in some pain. Dare I ask about banks? What do you what do you think? So we've liked the banks, and you know, obviously we didn't anticipate what's unfolded over the past week. Um, our banks team does think that this is a fairly contained implosion. We'll wait and see on that. I think if you're a longer term investor, of course, whenever you have big, big dislocations like this, there are always opportunities. If you're a shorter term investor, you probably need to wait and see. I know you've done a lot of analysis in the past on small caps. What do you think now about large caps versus small caps? So, look, I think in the very short term, large caps have an advantage because they're more biased towards defensive sectors and growth sectors like technology. Financials are getting are, are really being more of a drag on the small cap space right now. Um, small caps are more cyclical. So while we have these fears and this risk off moment, it's a tough place to be. But the valuations still look fantastic. So I think if we keep that 2024 recovery thesis on the economy intact, you're going to want to be at Adding to small caps in here. Adding money here. And, and layoffs seem to be creeping up. Are, are you concerned about the effect on the economy there? So I'm, I'm comforted by the fact that the industrial layoffs are basically non-existent. Industrials did most of their layoffs in 2020 around the pandemic, as much as we saw in the GFC or the tech bubble. So that's going to give this economy some resilience in here. But outside of that, we are starting to see areas like media, financials, healthcare, consumer products pick up. Frankly, that's what we expected to see even before this banks issue, uh, simply because we are starting to see the labor market deteriorate a bit. Frankly, it's probably better news for investors that it's getting started sooner rather than later. Do you see any mistakes out there that you think investors are making right now that they should know about? So, look, there's a big rotation out of value and into growth this, this week. Um, that makes sense, given what's happening to the banks and interest rate expectations. But there are some babies getting thrown out with the bathwater. Um, industrials have been getting hit pretty hard. Energy stocks have been getting hit pretty hard. There are cyclical concerns there, but they really have nothing to do with what's going on in the banks. Thank you, Lori.